We have a saying on my show that there's more to horror movies than just guys chasing women with chainsaws. On the other hand, sometimes that's exactly what they are. Grab your morning coffee and let's have a quick chat about the brand new film, Netflix's Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Good morning, and thank you for joining me for breakfast. I'm Steve the Cat, host of PBDC TV's horror movie discussion program, Spooky Tales with Steve the Cat. I know mornings are a really busy time, but you need to take some time for yourself, so I thought we could take just a minute to have a chat about Netflix's new film, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Now, just to make my biases clear right up front, I love horror movies, but I am not a big fan of the Texas Chainsaw franchise. For me, the original film starts out too slowly, then gets interesting when Leatherface first appears, and then it just descends into a cornucopia of screaming and macabre imagery that I find more annoying than frightening. That said, the film is one of the classics that helped to shape the slasher genre, and I won't dispute its importance in the overall history of horror films. It's just not for me. Anyway, the new film, simply titled Texas Chainsaw Massacre, was just released on February 18th, 2022 as a Netflix exclusive. At least that's the case here in the US. I can't speak to its distribution outside the US. The new film is a direct sequel to the 1974 film, so the night it was released, I watched a double feature of the original film and the brand new sequel back to back. Then the next day I watched the 2003 remake of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, then I watched the new film a second time, because I wanted to make sure I was giving it a fair shake. So the bottom line for me is that this is at best a mediocre slasher film. The gist of the story is that a bus full of hipsters from Austin have come to a small and largely abandoned Texas town called Harlow with the idea of creating a gentrified community. Of course, they run afoul of Leatherface and chaos ensues. Now I could give you more details than that, but frankly that's really all you need to know. The film is spectacularly predictable and derivative and in particular seems like an attempt to copy the rebooted Halloween franchise. The film delivers a lot of blood and gore, but comes up short in delivering interesting characters or anything resembling tension or actual scares. The film features the return of Sally Hardesty, the sole survivor of the 1974 film, but it feels like they're just copying the Halloween franchise and frankly, her character is underutilized and wasted. There are a few things to like in this film. First of all, if you're the kind of person who is only interested in the blood and gore aspects of a slasher film, you will probably enjoy this one. The pacing of the film is pretty good, and there are a lot of kills, and I thought the ones at the start of Leatherface's Rampage were particularly good. So even though it's predictable, the film winds its way through the various slasher film checkpoints without ever dragging, and gives you some interesting kills along the way. If you're just looking for a slasher film equivalent of a popcorn movie, this film works as well as any number of other choices. On the other hand, if you're looking for any kind of substance to the film, you're going to be disappointed. The cast is almost, but not quite, made up entirely of 20-something hipsters from Austin, and the film just inundates you with every Generation Z trope imaginable. This is not a positive and I'm not sure why the writers thought that it was a good idea. After the first three minutes, I was already chomping at the bit for Leatherface to kill all of these people. Maybe that's what the writers were going for, but it's tough to enjoy a film when you hate everybody in it. They do attempt to make a couple of the characters sympathetic, but they all come off as one-dimensional, and you won't really care about any of them at the end of the day. This is a Netflix film, so naturally there's a cavalcade of check-the-box social issues that are wedged into the script, including guns, school shootings, environmentalism, and racism, and it feels tacked on and perfunctory. And of course, there's the problem of large parts of the story being nonsensical. The hipsters want to gentrify the town by opening restaurants and art galleries and comic book shops. This town is, by the way, seven hours from Austin by car. Who do they think is going to eat at these restaurants and shop at these stores? How do they plan to run a restaurant with no vendors or farmer's markets in the area? For that matter, 
how did the protagonist's electric car even make it to this town that's seven hours from Austin by car? Did he take advantage of the many charging stations that dot the landscape of rural Texas? But the magical electric car pales in comparison to Leatherface's magical chainsaw, which has been in storage and untouched for decades, and yet cranks right up when called upon. Oh, and it's also capable of deflecting shotgun blasts and disabling a bus, although they never actually show us how the chainsaw disables the bus. You can make this kind of foolishness work in a campy horror comedy by making it part of the film's humor. But Texas Chainsaw Massacre is not a campy comedy, so it just feels, well, stupid. So, in summary, Texas Chainsaw Massacre will satisfy fans of slasher films who have no expectations beyond a lot of kills, some of which are interesting. But it's going to disappoint you if you expect anything more than that. Personally, I give it one paw out of four. A person who's only interested in gore and kills might give it two out of four, but I wouldn't give it anything beyond that. Now, originally this film was supposed to be released theatrically, but as the project went on, it became a streaming exclusive. This is probably a good thing for the filmmakers and probably saved them a lot of embarrassment. The comparisons between this film and the new Halloween franchise are unavoidable, and on that front, Texas Chainsaw Massacre is just embarrassing when compared to the 2018 remake of Halloween or Halloween Kills. Now, that said, I'm a huge fan of Halloween, and as I said earlier, I'm not a fan of the Texas Chainsaw franchise, so that may just be my biases speaking, but probably not. Anyway, your mileage may vary, but watch at your own risk. And if it falls short, don't say I didn't warn you. Just take comfort in the fact that you didn't pay 15 bucks to watch it in the theater. Well, that's all for now. Thanks for stopping by this morning. Remember that we air new episodes of Spooky Tales with Steve the Cat every Monday night at 10 p.m. Eastern, and we would love to have you join us for our next episode. You can find us on YouTube, Rumble, and Facebook, so feel free to drop by, check out some of our other videos, and hit that subscribe button. Until next time, this is Steve the Cat wishing you a good morning and a great day. Bye-bye, everybody.